Susanna is a historian and a scholar for Judaic studies. She was uh, born in Bulgaria, but now uh, lives and works in uh, Germany. And for the last eight years already, uh, until very recently, uh, she was a, a curator at the Jewish Museum in Augsburg, Bavaria. Uh, from 2011 to 2017, she was also the executive editor for the Bulgarian documents uh, in the project, a very important one, the conventional pro project, the persecution and murder of European Jews by National Socialist Germany between 1933 and 1945. Um, this is... Uh, really um, great job done, uh, mostly until now all the volumes that were published uh, in, uh, in German, but uh, already a few volumes uh, in a joint project uh, with Yad Vashem, were also published, uh, translated and published uh, in English a a as well. Um, Susanna's uh, lecture to today will focus on preparing this uh, section of documents uh, um, on Bulgaria and Bulgarian case um, uh, during the, the war, which was included in uh, uh, volume number 13 of the, the series, The Persecution and Murder of the European Jews. Um, um, Susie, uh, the floor is yours. I hope everything will be okay with the sound. Thank you uh, very much for the introduction. Um, do you hear me? Okay, thank you. So dear um, conference participants, uh, dear organizers, dear colleagues, I'm very happy to be invited to speak to you and would like to thank the organizers, uh, organizers for making it possible uh, for me to participate from my home in Berlin. In the following, I would like to present the part concerning Bulgaria of the German language source edition, The Persecution and Murder of European Jews by National Socialist Germany, 1933 till 1945, PMJ for short. Um, I will talk about the research work, some new insights gained in the process, but also problems and challenges, um, as well as some still open questions to the research. Um, I'm very sorry for not preparing a full um, PowerPoint presentation. I will be showing uh, at the end of my lecture a single document, but I hope that you nevertheless can follow me um, during the talk. Uh, so what is the uh, PMJ? Um, it's a scholarly edition of historical written sources on the persecution of Jews in Europe, uh, initiated over 15 years ago by research institutions in Germany. The editors are the Federal Archives, uh, the Leibniz Institute of Contemporary History, and the Chair of Modern and Contemporary History of the University of Freiburg with 16 volumes and over 5,000 documents now available. The German language edition has already been completed. The last uh, volume was published in 2021. The edition aims to publish a representative selection of sources on the persecution of the Jews. Um, a large number of the documents are being published for the first time, or at least for the first time in German. And the 16 volumes are arranged chronologically and um, geograph uh, geographically. Uh, five volumes are devoted to the persecution of Jews in Germany, as well as in annexed Austria and the protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia. The other 11 volumes focus on the parts of Europe either occupied by the German Wehrmacht um, under German domination or um, in collaborating states like the Bulgarian Kingdom. Emphasis is placed on the regions where most uh, Jews lived, in particular Poland, the occupied part of the Soviet Union, and Hungary. And the separate volume is dedicated to the Auschwitz concentration camp and the death marches. Each volume is provided with an introduction um, that places the events in the country or region in question in the overall historical context of the Shoah. Uh, thematic emphasis are set, the region-specific contexts um, are addressed, and the current state of research is illuminated. 
The edited documents have an extensive annotation apparatus, um, which in addition to the place of discovery and text critical annotations, provides background information on the document, the persons acting in it, the historical context, and also comments on any misrepresentations. For several years, work has been underway on an English uh, translation of the edition with Yad Vashem on board as um, a publisher. Most of the English volumes are still in progress and volumes 13 and 14, uh, which we will look at in more detail uh, soon, are uh, scheduled to appear in about three to four years according to the editors. As far as the document section is concerned, uh, the English edition should essentially correspond to the original German uh, edition. However, it is planned to update the introductions and, if necessary, uh, the annotations to the documents with regard to new, new research findings. What place does Bulgaria occupy in the edition? Uh, the geographical division of the volumes follows, uh, unfortunately, the course of the 1939 pre-war borders for Bulgaria, but not only. This means that the territories occupied um, after this cut-off date are not treated in the same volume as Bulgaria proper. Uh, volume 13 of the edition, which also includes uh, the two allies, Slovakia and Romania, deals with the core area, which we refer to as Old Bulgaria from uh, 1941 on. I worked on this volume as executive editor. The occupied territories, Macedonia, Trace, and the city of Pirot um, are dealt um, with under Yugoslavia and Greece in volume 14, along with Italy and Albania. The selection of the documents uh, was subject to the same criteria uh, for the complete edition. Uh, each country or region is given a specific uh, place, roughly according uh, to the size of the respective Jewish population at that time. Accordingly, the Bulgarian section uh, accounts for just about 20% um, of, or 72 um, of 343 documents in volume 13, while the remaining 80% um, are distributed between Slovakia and Romania. Uh, in volume 14, there are again another 20 documents covering the occupied territories. The division of the areas of interest to us uh, into two different volumes was, of course, one of the initial challenges um, in the project. Uh, we worked closely with both colleagues, Sanela Schmidt uh, and Maria Vasiliku, who worked on Yugoslavia and Greece to find a solution to this problem. Uh, this looks as follows. Uh, first, the introductions to Yugoslavia and Greece, um, each contain subchapters on Bulgarian occupation. Secondly, of the 20 documents edited, about a dozen um, are perpetrators document uh, that come from Bulgarian archives. Um, many thanks uh, at this point to the colleagues Roman Avramov and Nadia Danova, who is not uh, here at the conference, but um, who both uh, worked on their um, edition of documents about the deportation at the same time uh, with me uh, in the Bulgarian State Archives and shared their research findings with us. Um, thus, you can find the sources in question, uh, both in uh, their volumes and in volume 14 of, um, of our edition. Um, these documents make it clear that in the occupied territories, Bulgaria did not simply act at the behest of um, the Germans, but pursued its own interests and initiated uh, and enacted measures itself. Uh, ultimately organizing the handing over of the Jewish population there and um, uh, plundering their properties. I will just close um, the topic of the occupied territories and uh, concentrating the following on the work um, on volume 13. The first task was, um, of course, um, to trace the most important steps of persecution to introduce the central uh, perpetrators um, on both the German and the Bulgarian side and to outline the scope of action of the Bulgarian leadership. At the same time, and this is a 
special concern of the entire project, um, the perspective of the Jews on this time and their experiences were to be given greater attention than before. Ideally, up to 40% of the written testimonies were to be first-person documents by Jewish witnesses from the time of persecution and not written retrospectively. A further 40% um, of the documents were to relate to the perpetrators, um, for example, laws, ordinances, official documents or private records, um, such as diaries of persons who were involved um, in the persecution of the Jews or who benefited from it. Uh, the remaining 20% were um, to represent uh, the perspective of the so-called bystanders or observers um, or reactions to the persecution, neutral reactions, solidary reactions, but also approving uh, reactions by persons not uh, directly affected. Um, at the beginning of the research, um, I took stock of the existing source um, editions on the subject. This was around uh, 2011. This revealed that the majority of the documents published reflect the perpetrator's perspective. Uh, comparatively few documents, on the other hand, came from the Jews themselves. Often the focus was on single aspects or time periods, for example, the debate about the adoption of the law for the protection of the nation, actions in solidarity with the persecuted, or negotiations with German authorities about the deportation. Basically, uh, these older uh, source editions reflect the prevailing rescue uh, narrative of the time in which they were published. Um, it is true that the responsibility of the Bulgarian leadership was uh, substantiated with important documents. However, it was either underrated uh, by the overestimation of the resistance uh, to the persecution measures, or um, it was somehow diluted uh, by the overemphasis on German pressure. In uh, the research um, and selection for the edition, therefore, um, the aim was to avoid such distortions and to focus on some blanks. For example, the documents begin as early as 1938-39 with the suppression and expulsion of the stateless Jews and those uh, with foreign citizenship. Um, I recall the presentation by uh, Moshe Kanari this morning. Um, the actions carried out by the Bulgarian police marked the beginning of anti-Jewish measures even before uh, the law for protection of the nation and the emerging alliance with Germany. Admittedly, uh, given the limited space, uh, it would hardly have been possible to include all aspects uh, that uh, had received little attention up to that point. Uh, however, I hope that uh, it has been possible to at least touch um, on some of them and to gain some new or interesting insights in the process as I uh, will briefly demonstrate in a moment. Uh, first, um, a couple of uh, dry facts and statistics. Most of the documents were researched um, in archives and libraries in Bulgaria, Germany and Israel, for example in Yad Vashem or the Central Zionist archives. A few documents uh, came from archives in the USA, Great Britain and Switzerland, and only two uh, sources originate from private collections. About half of the documents are published for the first time, and the rate for the um, Jewish uh, voices is about two-thirds. Um, among the perpetrator documents, you will find a selection of central and well-known. Uh, sources, some of them were um, dealt um, upon by the colleagues uh, during the conference. Um, I mean, wars, decrees, but also memoranda of Commissar Belev, negotiations between the Bulgarian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and uh, the German legation in Sofia, ex, um, excerpts from the diary of uh, Prime Minister Filov, the belev danica agreement, and so on. Besides, uh, it was necessary to highlight some aspects that had received little attention so far. Among others, um, the economic side of persecution. Uh, so we will also find, for example, a petition by the eyeglass makers in a small town 
to deprive a Jewish competitor um, of his business or the proposal of a Sofia citizen on how to deal with the assets of Jews after the expulsion, expulsion from the capital. Other topics uh, that were um, unfortunately only uh, touched upon were um, the topic of ghettoization and also um, the Bulgarian policies um, towards Jewish uh, emigration um, at the end of 1943 and the beginning of 1944. Um, the bystander voices uh, were also about capturing different reactions um, and thus painting a more nuanced uh, picture of everyday life. In addition to impressive protest and expression of solidarity, there is, for example, the sympathetic report of a well-known professor about Germany's anti-Jewish policy or the protest um, of a textile worker against the dismissal um, of the former Jewish owner um, of the factory from the labor camp. During the research of this group of documents, one of the most pleasant surprises occurred. Um, the forgotten diary of the opposition politician uh, Nikola Mushanov came to light in the state archives. He has already uh, been known as a sharp critic um, of the anti-Semitic policy of the Bulgarian leadership. Um, the diary now edited with his memory, uh, memoirs in Bulgarian provided an unexpected insight um, into the atmosphere in the Bulgarian capital during the fateful days um, at the beginning of March in 1943. Um, Roma and Avramov and Nadia Danva have included the relevant passages in their edition and a short excerpt can also be found in volume 13. In conclusion, I would like to speak in particular about the victims' documents. Um, researching such documents uh, proved to be particularly difficult. Um, in the relevant archives in Bulgaria, official documents are kept in the first place and there are, to my knowledge, at least no bequests of Jewish personalities. Uh, the situation is, is in Israel is somehow uh, better. Uh, here there are relevant holdings both uh, in the archives in Yad Vashem and, and in the Central Zionist archives, which I was able to use. Uh, despite various attempts, I was only moderately successful in finding first-person documents, um, for example, diaries or letters um, from private collections. Ultimately, you will find in the volume 25 uh, Jewish first-person documents. Some of the aspects touched upon are uh, the activity of the Bulgarian Jewish leadership, legal and illegal immigration to Palestine, uh, contacts with Bulgarian Jews um, in Palestine, life in the forced labor groups, um, eviction from Sofia in living conditions in the countryside, and resistance. In addition to the thematic aspects, um, the selection was about showing different actors um, uh, such as different social groups or uh, political views um, or even co different coping strategies. Uh, Jewish first-person documents can help to gain new perspectives on the events and even debunk some myths. Uh, I would like to demonstrate this uh, with one final example from the volume. Um, in the Bulgarian context, um, the thesis is launched from time to time um, that the Bulgarian leadership had no knowledge um, that the deportations led to death. During this period, two men who had just succeeded in immigrating from Bulgaria to Eretz Israel described the precarious situation of the Bulgarian Jews to the Jewish agent agency as follows. We will divide uh, the persecution of the Jews in Bulgaria into three periods. First, the period in which the Jews were uh, materially destroyed. Uh, they were deprived of all goods, work, and money, so that today 99% of the Jews are already jobless and breadless. Um, Second, the period in which they tried to depress the Jews morally. They were forbidden to go out after 9 o'clock in the evening. They were ordered to wear the AOL star 
um, their radios and telephones were confiscated. They were allowed to buy food only during certain hours of the day when there was nothing left, and they were forbidden to walk on several streets. The transition to the third period was uh, characterized by many cruel decrees. Thus, the ghetto was introduced. Several families had to crowd together in communal apartments so that they had to live in the worst uh, hygienic conditions. All unemployed um, Jews had to leave Sofia in the cold Bulgarian winter. No exceptions was made uh, for the elderly, the sick, or the children. Um, this state, should it continue, um, um, driving the poor people out of their homes in the cold continental winter and forcing them to work in malaria areas, often with, also with 40 degrees fever, without medicine, without food, with um, bestial treatment, means a slow but sure death, um, even if poison, gas or electricity is missing. Uh, for this, the Bulgarians are sufficiently refined masters. This is the transition to the third period, deportation to Poland, the slaughter of the Jews. This will undoubtedly take place in the spring or before. Um. The letter makes um, it clear that Bulgarian Jews were um, expecting deportation as early as um, the end of 1942. Moreover, they had a clear idea um, that this would lead to physical extermination. With this example, I wanted to show how the focus on uh, the Jewish perspective can contribute to a better understanding of the events of the Shoah in Bulgaria. So, yeah. Um, I'm almost ready. Me. Yeah, <laughs> and we, I, we, we just don't see the, anything on the screen, so... Uh, ah, maybe there is no, um, nothing, uh, yeah. this was only the document. Should I uh, okay. return the document? I, I can do it. Um, I'm sorry? We can put it on the screen, Gasho. Do you see now anything? No. Uh, probably it's me. Um. Okay, so never mind. So you can uh, uh, now. Now uh, is yes. it? Now it's visible. Uh, okay, this is the the yes. end of the document, um, basically. So um, and um, my words. Uh, we are experiencing times of uh, strengthening historical revisionism. Not only Bulgaria's responsibility for the deportation from the occupied territories is denied, uh, despite the abundance of documents already published, also topics concerning the everyday life of the Jews in the old borders of the country, such as forced labor groups, but also their suffering um, under anti-Semitic laws and measures in general, are again and again the subject of relativization and speculations. Maybe. Um, the focus on the voices of the persecuted um, would successfully counteract such myth-making. I don't know, um, but in my opinion, it should be a priority of research um, and source publication on Bulgaria um, to focus even more um, on this perspective. Uh, I'm therefore pleased that several contributions in the conference program point uh, in this direction. Thank you very much for your attention. אוקיי, כן, זה לוקח לו קצת זמן. סוזי, can you just stop sharing from your computer? And then we'll see you again on the screen. I have to try, I have to find, I'm sorry, I'm not a very good Zoom expert. אוקיי, yes, thank you. Gotcha. Um, thank you for the for lecture, and I think it's very important because it's a, a, a new and much-awaited uh, uh, volume to be translated uh, from other people 
who don't know uh, German, uh, of course, and uh, while there are several collections of documents that have been published, mostly in Bulgarian, uh, throughout the years, starting again with uh, this uh, a book of Nathan Greenberg's uh, Documenti from 45, until recently, probably, I, I think the most recent collection of documents that was published was uh, the one that uh, Roman Avramov and Nadia Danova published uh, already some 10 years ago. Um, uh, but th this one is, it will be a very important addition, of course, uh, uh, to, to this, as you, you said, so the uh, half of the documents ha hasn't been uh, published yet, and that's very uh, important. So now we have uh, five, six mi minutes, and I would like to open the floor for questions. Yes. Uh, just a, a second, so we'll give you one microphone. So, yeah, no, 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 but it, it will be also for, for the recording and for the, the translation. Can. Now, can I ask two questions of, uh, to Vasilis? The first one, do you, uh, do you know about the uh, Thracians or the Greek uh, population uh, called the deported and the, the island of them Jews by the Bulgarian uh, in, the second, uh, in the Holocaust of them? This is the first one. Because we know, we know that the Greek, even they was very anti-Nazi and, uh, and uh, fight from the uh, country against them. In, in the case of the Saloniki, in Saloniki case, they was very, very happy to see the, the Greek, uh, uh, you know, uh, treat against the Jews and, and, and deport them to death. This is the first one. Uh, particularly, I ask about the, the uh, territories that was uh, deported, uh, that uh, was in, in the Bulgaria government in this time. The second one, if there is any bitterness or hate from Greek now, uh, uh, especially in, in Trichia, toward the Bulgarian uh, government because of them, uh, do, uh, uh, as, uh, they occupied them and they was very, very treated badly, uh, called them. As we know, in, 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 um, in, uh, in uh, Macedonia and Yugoslavia in Serbia, there was, there is, a, even the, nowadays, hatred a code Bulgarian because that's ta a, 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 that's a, a, a time w when they was occupied by them. Yes, thank you for your questions. About the first one, uh, definitely there were different uh, reactions in, uh, uh, in the case of uh, Saloniki or uh, the case uh, in central uh, Greece, uh, Volos, uh, Larissa, Kartitsa and so on. It has to do with uh, different historical conditions and uh, relations between the Greeks and uh, the Jews. Uh, in uh, the case of uh, uh, of the towns in, uh, in this area, uh, occupied by the Bulgarians, uh, we have uh, some uh, eyewitnesses' uh, testimonies and uh, uh, some uh, documents uh, from uh, the German consul in uh, Kavala. Um, so all the, the testimonies agree that uh, the local population 
felt very close to the Jews because they were from the same side. They were victims uh, during the occupation. And uh, I can tell you that the Jews were uh, victims twice, first as Greek citizens and then as Jews because of the anti-Semitic uh, measures. Um, the other thing uh, was that uh, the, the Greeks believed that uh, it was their turn after the Jews because uh, it was the open issue about uh, the, uh, the Bulgarian citizenship if they, they would get it or uh, they had to leave uh, the area. Uh, it didn't, uh, uh, they didn't implement this, uh, this law after the reactions of the Greek government in uh, Athens. But uh, uh, people believe that it will be their turn. I mean, the, the Greeks, the Greek Orthodox people. Uh, what was the second? Well, yes. Uh, as I told you, it was an open uh, trauma, the third uh, um, Bulgarian occupation, as they call it in this uh, area. Uh, the, the first and the second generation after the, the war had uh, all these uh, stereotypes, uh, all, uh, or even the memories, uh, given by their own uh, parents. But uh, nowadays, uh, the new generations uh, have uh, definitely better uh, relations uh, and uh, that can be a result uh, after the opening of uh, the borders and uh, for example every summer the Bulgarians are tourists in these uh, regions and uh, every winter the Greeks are uh, tourists in, uh, in Bulgaria so I hope this uh, personal uh, contact would help uh, people to, to overcome uh, the, the traumas and uh, uh, some stereotypes. Um, so we just a, a short note and then I will take one more question. Uh, uh, okay, please. Yes, uh, the microphone is already with you. <laughs> We don't, we don't hear you. We don't hear you. No, not yet. Yes, now it's okay. I want to tell you that the Bulgarians took more than seven, exactly seven thousand and one forty four people from Skopje to Treblinka. All my family, fifty one persons, all of them to Treblinka. I am the only, uh, the, the Bulgarian took me also from Monopol and tried to send me. I am the only one alive from all my family. That's what the Bulgarian do, did. Thank you. It's very important, of course, the personal uh, stories and te testimonies. Uh, we, we, see, we, we, we see actually that, uh, um, like what Vasily said, uh, on the personal context now, nowadays between Bulgaria and Greece, that improved the situation. In other uh, examples, uh, the Holocaust can be used for political um, um, in, in, in the relations between states in the Balkans, unfortunately. Um, but we'll now take another question. Um, I'm wondering, in, in light of all of these very clear images of um, sometimes very beautifully dressed, uh, elegant people with beautiful homes and uh, now we hear of a family of 51 persons, almost all of whom are murdered, except the one remaining soul to tell us about it. I wonder if all of these deprivations of property 
it, of course, it's, it's, it's more, more important that we focus on the violence of killing and murdering in a very cruel way. But there are also ways of destroying homes, the, the pictures, for example, of the auctions, that are another way of showing disrespect for one of the most important aspects of Judaism, home life and the education and the nurture. What, if anything, are the countries that have been doing this by way of reparation? Or is that just a word that is utterly irrelevant when you deny that any of this happened at all? In the case of Nazi looted art, I'm very familiar with a lot of, lot of pain and difficulty in getting people who, who have possessed the art but don't own it because the heirs of those who were murdered are still alive and it's being hidden in basements of museums where no one in the world will ever see that art again because the so-called owner has gotten a very, very fat compensation on current value of the art that's helpful with his tax re returns. So it's not one public good against another public good, but it is a complete, aware, uh, a complete lack of awareness of how the, the beautiful images, Fazilis, that you showed us of who these people were. And that whole way of denying omits the way that liberty is conjoined with property, which is conjoined, of course, with life itself. And I don't know if putting more pressure on these things is, is appropriate or not, because it's been a very long, hard struggle in the United States of America for our court system to be even aware of the magnitude of the theft and the refusal of those who have property of this sort. And I don't know whether, you know, with all your access to, to materials in Berlin, there's, uh, I, I, do, I'm, I am aware that the Republic of, of Germany is very in, intent in, in doing better on restitution claims than we are in the United States. But that's the general set of questions that I, I don't know if anybody in the group has any awareness of any, anything that's going on uh, in, in the Balkans, but I know a lot of people lo lost the, I mean, the most poignant single example I can give you was in Kavala when we saw a beautiful home that hadn't been lived in for 40 years or so. It's, been, it was just, it's abandoned property, and it's all, the only thing that, that it looks like now is as though it's in a camp. There's barbed wire all around it, barbed wire to keep theft from occurring. And, and you see these beautifully, uh, uh, the windows that are stained glass and, and have the Star of David and things like that. You know it was a Jewish home. You, you know, perhaps they were tobacco dealers. Who knows what they were? Uh, but that's, that winds up to be the place of collecting people to send them to Treblinka, a tobacco warehouse. But what happens to all of these claims if someone does come back, as Jews did in Poland, only to be hit and murdered for daring to come back home? So I think home demolition as a project is the name of World War II from the beginning of the bombing of Warsaw to the American efforts uh, to end war by bombing Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Thank you. Uh, as Dan uh, said at the beginning of the conference, uh, there is still a lot more to be researched, although some people think that uh, we have been researching the issue for eight years and there's nothing more to research. Uh, so with this comment, and I'm, I'm sure, especially for, for Northern Greece, for drama in Kavala, Vasilis is one of the persons uh, I personally know that uh, is more, most knowledgeable of the Jewish life, both pre-war and during the war. Yeah, uh, we will probably answer to this uh, during